the next concept that we have to see before going into finding what the change in length by original length is, is called as the gradient operator. of a vector valued vector function. Okay. What this vector valued means is this is the range of the function. function is a vector this here says about the domain of the function function is a vector example of vector valued vector function is displacement field which is a function of for us have to x comma t where x is position vector of material particle in the reference configuration okay so that is the position of the material particle in the reference configuration and this t denotes the time u is the displacement field this is a material representation this is a material representation of the displacement field okay so this is an example of a vector valued vector function. Now before going into finding the gradient of that let us assume a function A to be a function of x and y or let us assume z is some function of x and y. Okay. Now what does Now what does do f by do x and do f by do y mean or if I say what does they mean. So basically if I have if I plot this function in a 3 dimensional space in a 3 dimensional space with x y and z oriented like this I will get a surface. Okay on this surface I might get a surface like that okay say this is a surface on x and y axis this is the x and y axis in the plane this is the z axis I get a surface like this and what does gradient of z represent is it represents a tangent plane to that surface okay it represents the tangent plane to the surface just like when you have a function of a single variable and I write y equal to function of x and if I plot x versus y if I get a curve like this at any point x the slope of the curve slope of a tangent at that point this angle theta is given by dou y by dou x right. Similarly when I have a function of two variables there will be a surface that is formed and there will be a tangent plane to that surface. This tangent plane is characterized by two slopes one is how this slope is and the other one is how the slope is along uh, another mutually perpendicular direction right. These two slopes characterizes this tangent plane knowing the one slope in one direction will not help me find what the slope in the other direction is because they are independent just like knowing the slope at a particular point in of a function will want to help us find the slope at a different point. In case of a function of two variables knowing the slope along a particular direction will want to help us find what is slope 
on a different direction is unless I know the slopes along two mutually perpendicular directions. Okay. So, this gradient of z, so when I say gradient of z, it means dou f by dou x E x plus dou f by dou y E y. If f is a function of two variables, if it is a function of three variables, it will be dou f by dou z E z. Okay. That is, there will be three. Now, it is a three dimension space x, y, and z, and the function forms a fourth dimension. And the ends, what happens is this will have three slopes, three independent slopes, which I have to know before I can find what is the slope along any other direction is. Let us elaborate on this a little bit more. Now, the gradient is defined as following. Let us assume that I am dealing with a scalar value vector function that is some phi as a function of the position vector x. Now, gradient of phi dotted with a is defined as limit alpha tending to 0 phi tilde of x plus alpha a minus phi tilde of x divided by alpha. What this means is the slope of the tangent plane at x when approach through the direction a. Okay. So, what it means is in two dimensions, if I have the surface, there will be a tangent plane to the surface, there will be a tangent plane to the surface, okay. And if I approach the point through a direction A, what will be the slope of that line that is tangent to that point and this in the direction of A? Basically, there will be different directions, there are different slopes, one direction will have this slope one direction will have this slope and then different directions will have different slopes. Okay. So, that direction along which you approach is given by A. Okay. Now, let us see how this formula leads to the definition of grad phi as dou phi by dou x E x plus dou phi by dou y E y plus dou phi by dou z e z. For that let a to be e x then grad phi dotted with e x would be limit alpha tending to 0 phi of x is x plus alpha e x plus y e y plus z e z minus phi tilde of x e x plus y e y plus z e z divided by alpha. This is nothing but dou phi by dou x. Okay. So, grad phi dot E x is dou phi by dou x. This implies grad phi x component is dou phi by dou x. Similarly, you can show that grad phi dotted with E y is dou phi by dou y and grad phi dotted with E z 
is dou phi by dou z. Hence you get the definition of grad of phi to be this expression, hence you get the definition of grad of phi to be this expression. Okay. Now we saw what a gradient of a scalar valued vector function is. Similarly, now when let us look at what is the meaning of gradient of a vector valued vector function. Okay. Vector valued vector function is u function of x comma t. Now, if I say gradient of u, what I mean is I have three functions which depend upon three variables, right? Since there are three functions that depends upon three variables, I will have nine slopes which I have to find. For each function, which is a function of three variables, I will have three slopes to be determined. Similarly, there are three functions, so I will have nine slopes to be determined. So, those nine slopes are arranged in this particular fashion. I will not go into detail derivation of this. This is the definition of gradient of u in Cartesian coordinate system. in Cartesian coordinate system okay, where u x, u y, u z are components of the displacement vector. To be more specific, these are the Cartesian components of the displacement vector. Okay. Same grad u in cyclical polar coordinates would be in cylindrical polar coordinate system here u r u theta u z are cylindrical polar components of the displacement vector and r theta z the cylindrical polar coordinates of a point in space. Okay. So, basically we understand that gradient of a 
vector value to vector function has to be containing 9 components because there is 3 functions involving 3 variables and each of those functions will have 3 slopes which will determine which will make it to be 9 slopes to determine the gradient of a vector value vector function ok. Now I am not going to go into detailed derivation of how you get the components of grad u in different coordinate systems but this will be given taken as given to you ok.